So to welcome everybody, how many of those who came tonight have um, been to APAL meetings? So um, most of you have heard that a couple of who have at APAL is the Aromas Progressive Action League. We got started a couple of years ago in Aromas and been working on uh, a number of issues. And um, Jane and um, Wendy and I and um, Dan and a number of other people um, have been involved in the climate action team, and we put this together. We've done another a number of other events that you've seen in town. The electric car show last year. We're going to be doing another one on April May twenty ninth. May twenty ninth. Um, and um, we're working on some other events, um, um, sort of educational events like that coming up. But tonight is about our PG and Phyllis. So. so welcome. Thank you for coming to the demystifying your electric yes. bill. I hope you have some of the mysteries. Um, as Seth said, um, this is sponsored by APAL. And I want to introduce myself. I'm Jane Rekadal, Seth Caperin, Wendy Elder, and Sean. We were going to have guest star Sean Thiel, but I think he's, he may be coming here. He's a solar consultant. <clears throat> so um, the format for this workshop will be um, we will, uh, Wendy, Seth, and I will each do a little presentation. And <clears throat> excuse me. And during those presentations, it's fine if you want to ask questions. Like you don't have to wait till the end or anything. Just say, "Hey, what do you mean by that?" That's fine. Um, and then at the end, we'll have time for questions as well. I know some of you may have brought your bills, um, so that's um, if if you want, we have time to go over those and we can ask specific questions about those. We'll try our best to answer them. And um, if you have any questions you'd like to share with the group right now, we'd like to put them on the board and Seth will write those for us so that we make sure we address those and sometimes your question is going to answer somebody else's question. So does anyone have a question they want to put up on the board? Or a concern? Or a concern, <laughs> yeah. Well, just why are electric bills going up double in the past three months? Okay, that's a, that's a big concern. Yes, yes, that is a concern. It is, it's major. So, um, did anybody here, who, who here is already in the Monterey Bay uh, community power thing? How many of you have that on your bills already? So about uh, half, okay. We're not yet in, we haven't been brought on board yet. So did anybody get a rebate or a credit on the December bill? Mm -hmm. Two, three, four, okay. Everybody who's on my Everybody got community credit. power should have gotten a uh, uh, credit sure? on their December bill. Okay, yes. so while we're reading bills, where is it? Yes. Generation credit, is it that? No, it's on the, there's a section on the last page, I believe, that has the Monterey Day community power charges. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's where it shows up. But in December, yes. right? Hi. Oh, here. Here. Hi, I didn't get a receipt. You can also sign in. Oh, I got a $3.99. Yeah. 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 That was only for half the year this, this yeah. year. Okay, so we'll be addressing that. Debbie, did you, you said something? Yeah, like I was going to say, I don't know what, if you'll probably get to this, but the rebates are on an annual basis then? We'll yeah. see the rebate at the yeah, end of the year? Yeah, every December. No. They're, this is every six months. Twice. That's for commercial customers. I think it's residential also. Uh, I'd have to double check, but I'm pretty sure it's every six months for residential. Ooh, okay. I'll, I'll okay. check on that. We'll be checking. It's, it's on the bill as NBC. It's, every, it's, it's quarterly for commercial. Right, right. But it's every six months for residential. So, um, it's, a, it's annual. Is it? I'm sure. Okay. So, probably you know what kind of bill you're on, like a tiered bill, which is what everybody kind of used to be tiered. Some of you may be on time of use, or solar, or electric vehicle. We're going to talk about all of those four tonight. And then at the end, we can, we'll kind of get down to more of the nitty gritty in your bills. So, <clears throat> Wendy's going to start us off with um, some background basic information. Oh, you're so we said, okay, are you able to advance the slide? Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> I just need to look, right? So, um, starting with the most basic basic, the, um, the ma basic unit of electricity usage is the kilowatt hour, and that's what we get charged by, kilowatt hours. And um, kilowatt means a thousand watts. Um, and I like to think of a kilowatt hour as being the amount of electricity it takes to run a 
um, 100 watt incandescent light bulb for 10 hours. 100 watt. 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 100 LEDs, you can run one of those bulbs for six to seven hours on one kilowatt hour of energy. Mm -hmm. um, with refrigerators, an old refrigerator, 1996, 15 cubic foot, used four to five kilowatt hours a day without the ice maker. I guess those are really energy consumptive. A new Energy Star equivalent model uses one kilowatt hour a day. Anyway, that's the basic unit. And then we're going to talk about the grid a lot, and this is a really basic picture of the grid. Over on the left, you can see um, there's three major parts of the grid. There's generation on the left there, power plants, solar farms, that sort of stuff. There is transmission in the middle, and there, there's distribution to our various houses. Monterey Bay Community Power has taken over the generation portion. And PG&E is still in charge of transmission and distribution. So Monterey Bay Community Power, is everybody fairly aware of, of what Monterey Bay Community Power does? And we're lucky to have actually one of the board members from the policy board that runs Monterey Bay Community Power. John Freeman is here. He's a representative of San Juan Batista um, because he's on the city council there. And um, I'm a member of the Citizens Advisory Committee. Um, it's one of the other bodies there that works on policy. Um, mostly what we're for, focused on is um, Monterey Bay Community Power doesn't do generation themselves. They purchase power out on the wholesale market. Instead of PG&E, they, they fill that role. And then they sell it to us at a retail rate. And in doing that, they, they raise revenue, just like PG&E did when, when they did that. Instead of that revenue going to each of these shareholders, it's used for the rebates that you got. There were $4 million in rebates that went um, to all the users in the whole region. And um, we're working on developing programs. We're looking at um, putting in electric car chargers. Um, and we're focusing a lot on lower income um, users because they don't have access to some of the same subsidies that middle class people have. I'm looking at um, solar farms, microgrids. Um, it's, we're still in the process of trying to come up with a comprehensive program. And there's been a lot of regulatory issues with PG&E that have um, slowed down and cut back on the amount of revenue we're going to have to work with, especially for the first few years. The, the PG&E made a really um, unfortunate ruling in December that really um, was a big setback. We're trying to get that corrected legislatively. Um, the, you want to go to the next slide? Just click? Yeah, just click. So, one of the things that's been confusing um, is the difference in rates between PG&E and Monterey Bay Community Power. And if you look at your bill, there's no way of figuring out what's going on, unfortunately. I'm going to try to show you mathematically a little bit, but um, PG&E charges exactly the same amount. As, or excuse me, Monterey Bay Community Power charges exactly the same amount as PG&E. And on top of that, you get the 3% rebate that people received in December. And that was just for six months, so when you get it next year, it'll be more than that. And it'll probably be more than 3% next year, depending on the revenue flow coming into Monterey Bay Community Power. But if, if you look at your own bill, um, it used to be PG&E would charge us a bundled rate, which means they'd have one kilowatt hour charge for electricity that would cover distribution and um, generation. And there were some other things broken out separately, but most of the money you paid was, was a single rate. So now you're paying PG&E money for distribution, and you're paying Monterey Bay Community Power for the generation. The, the ruling that got made has to do with this thing called PCIA, and I'm not going to talk about it a lot, it's confusing, but the general concept is that PG&E entered into a lot of long-term contracts when we were their customers. So some of those they really entered into on our behalf. 
And um, especially renewable energy rates have come down considerably. So they, and they were required by law to enter into a certain percentage of renewable contracts. Um, even, so power rates have come down since Monterey Bay Community Power took over. And PG&E was left with all these contracts, so their customers were going to be hurt like that by that. It just wasn't really fair that um, their customers essentially were having to pay these legacy higher costs. So the PCIA is a rate per kilowatt hour that each of us has to pay back to them. Monterey Bay uh, Community Power's rate is set, so that's incorporated into what we pay. So that doesn't mean we pay more because we have to pay the PCIA. It just means Monterey Bay Community Power gets less revenue, and which is the reason we have less money for programs. So if you look on, the, on your statement, there's a section on electric delivery charges. So that's what PG&E is doing. This is the money that goes to PG&E. And if you see right here, there's a generation credit. And this is the part that's really confusing. And Monterey Bay Community Power had no control over how this got formatted. And PG&E came up with this. And it's just not at all transparent. Because the generation charge, basically, they're, they're giving you the rate for the electricity and then subtracting the generation charge. And then they're adding the generation charge back in over here. So it, it doesn't make a lot of sense if no one's explaining it to you. But they're not the same amount. That's what That's, and, and they're not the same amount. So I talked to you about the PCIA charge. That goes to PG&E. So that's shown over on this column here. But if you take the um, generation charge and add it to the PCIA that you're paying, and add it to the franchise fee surcharge, and add that to what you're paying to Monterey Bay Community Power. Um, basically, excuse me, if you add these three together, the generation credit, the PCIA, and the franchise charge, you come up with the same amount over here that you pay Monterey Bay Community Power. So you can see that it's identical. This other additional charge of 17 cents is something that if this was a PG&E customer and not a Monterey Bay Community Power, they would see that on their bill also. It would just show up over here. So this isn't an additional charge. Monterey Bay Community Power doesn't get to keep that 17 cents. They have to pay it to the state. And it's something that gets paid twice a year. It's a pretty minimal amount. There's a lot of public programs that get funded through our rates. And it's not very much for each of us. That's what pays for um, the CARE program and, and some other um, public purpose programs. And um, now hey, Seth, I, I would like to add one quick thing. Sure. Um, the fact that PG&E does the billing for Monterey Bay Community Power and everybody else, that is set by state law. So Monterey Bay Power could not do a separate billing if they wanted to. They are required, and every other CCA is also required by state law to use the billing system that the investor-owned utility provides. And it's probably a good thing. We don't, we're happy we get one bill. Even though it makes it confusing, it would, just, it would be inconvenient to get two separate bills. So there's a lot of complexity in the way the bills are formatted and, and the way the bills are created. Um, and that's why we're having this workshop. So Jane's going to talk about... Well, we were actually going to talk about tiered plans first. Tiered plans. Oh, I'm going to talk about You were going to talk about that. Okay, um, so the, the tiered plans is what you're probably used to. It's the way your bills have been formatted for decades now. And the idea with the tiered plans is, um, as you know, after the 70s when we needed to start conserving power more, and because people realized the cost of building new power plants created much more expensive electricity than old power plants, they, they wanted to incentivize you to, to use less power. So they came up with an amount that for um, your category of customer, they thought was a reasonable amount that you could get by on. And you get that at a really, a, a, essentially a subsidized rate. But if you go over that amount, the rate jumps up dramatically. And um, that's the way it's been a long time, but it's not going to be the way it is in the future. So we're going to move to time of, time of use rates, and that's what Jane is going to talk to you about. Questions on anything Seth has said so far? You want to hold until the end? <laughs> I'm just curious how many people um, are on a tiered rate for electricity. So you have a baseline and then a middle rate and then a high rate. Mm -hmm. 
No, it's an allowance. It's an allowance. It's an allowance. It's an allowance. It's right. allowance. Yeah. Yeah. And that's actually good if you don't use very much power. But if you go over your baseline, and boy, it starts costing. Mm -hmm. so, um, so we are going to be going to time of use. Now, uh, time of use is um, build not, it's built on how much you use, that still counts, but also the time of day that you use it. Certain times of day have a higher demand than other times of day, and those are going to cost more. So, time of use is going to be um, for everyone in 2020. I'm already on time of use, and so I'm pretty used to it, but it's, it takes some adjustment. When you know you're going to be paying more during a certain time of day, ooh, should I wash my clothes now? Oh no, I should wait till tonight. So you can see here um, that on this um, table, the green zones are when it's least expensive. Um, there's some good things about time of use actually. <clears throat> um, it is it does reflect the real cost of energy of electricity more accurately than our baselines used to. Consumers um, can save money on time of use if you can adjust when you use the power. And it is a greener choice if you are not using so much energy during the peak times, the red high price periods, because um, renewable energy is generated more during the, the daytime hours. Um, the afternoon evening is when there's not, there are not so many renewables available for the grid. So then they have to bring more, sometimes um, more uh, power plants online, which is very expensive, and more fossil fuels are generally used to produce um, non-renewables. So there's some benefits. Okay. Jane? Yes. Um, I seem to have what looks to be like kind of a mixture of both of those. Um, we're on a solar system. So oh, maybe, yes. Because so, we have tier one, mm -hmm. um, part peak, and off That's peak, right. and tier two. Yeah, we're on the same thing. Okay, so and so we're the, been on time of use it is because of that. Yeah. Solar, if you go on solar, you get time of use. Well, but think, it's also a tier. So yes. I think you're going to get to that. We'll get to that. Yeah. And that's a really important point because you can really shoot yourself in the foot or save some money. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you want to be sure that when you are going to use the more, the more uh, heavier use of powers to try to do that in the off-peak. So peak and off-peak, the peak hours are going to be 3 to 8 or 4 to 9 p.m., depending on the plan that you get onto. Off-peak are nights and everything and weekends outside of that, except solar has three tiers or three different zones that have peak, off-peak, and partial peak. They're not tier tiers, though. What? They're not tiers. They're, time they're not tiers. They're time tiers. Yeah. 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 Are these? They're three different pricing plans. Are these Monterey Bay? This is PG&E. PG this is PG&E, oh. and Monterey Bay is mirroring everything. Okay. It's all the same. So, yeah. so Monterey Bay, one of the reasons they did that is they wanted, they didn't want people to leave Monterey Bay stay with PG&E because the rates were more. The other reason is they don't have to do any rate setting. Rate setting is very expensive um, regulatory process. So instead of setting a rate that's a little cheaper, they just do the rebate at the end of the year. Yeah. And there are three different time of use plants. And those are, the first one is called time of use A. This is PG&E. This is uh, PG so this includes a baseline. So if you're accustomed to having a baseline, um, this is, and you don't use that much power, this could actually be a good choice for you. Um, there are a few um, things I want to say about this. So first of all, um, in this rate plan, you'll see that the peak time is 3 to 8 p.m. Every, every weekday, and then on the weekends, and on most holidays, it's all off peak. So it's priced accordingly. So it costs more during peak and less during off-peak. Um, so the summer rates are higher than the winter rates. That's true for us now as well. That's always the way it is. The baseline rate is, um, the, oh, by the way, these are not perfectly uh, reflective of the real cost because I think they have added in maybe some of the extra fees into that graph. So baseline rate can be as low as $0.08 cents per kilowatt hour on this plan, which is very reasonable. 
Um, and then you go above the baseline, you pay, pay more per kilowatt hour. And the summer is 32 to 40 cents. Winter is 27 to 28 cents when you go above your baseline. So that's one. Please Jane, yes. did they, yeah. does it show you on your bill how much the your like you know 20 cents a kilowatt hour? It does. It does. And we'll get to that. Okay. Thank I, you. I have a sample bill. Go ahead. Oh, now we're on the, the, the time of use B rate schedule. This one does not have a baseline. And so in this one, it's just uh, 4 to 9 p.m. is your peak time. And um, that's for weekdays, weekends, and most holidays. It's all off peak. So you're going to pay more during the weekdays. You know, just when you come home and you want to cook dinner, then you're paying peak, of course. Turn, turn, the, turn the lights on, put the TV on, put the laundry in, all that. Um, it's again like the A schedule. The June, I mean, sorry, the summer is more expensive than winter. And um, this one, because there's no baseline, if you tend to go over your baseline, this is probably a better plan for you. So we'll actually be able to choose. Yes, you get to choose. Um, the summer rate, I'm sorry, the summer rate above, uh, the summer rates vary between 27 and 37 cents per kilowatt hour, and the winter is 22 to 23 per cents per kilowatt hour. So that's, that's like peak is going to be the more expensive one, off peak the less expensive one. Okay. And the third plan is called just time of use. This has peak pricing every day, even on weekends and holidays. Every day, 4 to 9 p.m. You might think, why would you ever sign up for that? Because um, you get bill protection plan. And that is, if, it, if this plan costs you more than the tiered plan that some of you are on now, you will be credited the difference, so you can't lose. It's, it's, help, it's helpful for a transition. You know, some people just, you know, they, they want to have that reassurance that they won't be losing money. Now, the um, PG&E website has a bill comparison plan, I mean a tool, a tool. but it, it's every time I've been preparing my notes, it was not working, so <laughs> it'll probably be working after you know, tomorrow. <laughs> so um, anyway, so again, this plan has the higher peak between 4 and 9 p.m., and that is every day. In a way, it's easier, then you just know. The other ones is like, oh, what day is it? <laughs> That's, you know, when you're retired, Okay, so... Okay, we can get, move on. And um, your smart meter is the key to making all this work. So the smart meter is, um, has an interconnection, a two-way connection between the um, per energy provider and um, the meter, and it records every 15 minutes it's sending information. So it's, it's pretty much right off keeping track of what you're doing. Okay. So here's the sample bill. This is my bill, this is my bill. Um, this has time of use, EVA. That means electric vehicle, A. And we have an A and a B. I'm going to get to that too. But so, so you can see here, this describes what that is. And, and we also have solar. And when do you be talking about that net energy meeting? But this is exactly what, I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Cindy, yeah. Cindy, what you were talking about. You have peak, part peak, and off peak. If you look right here, you'll see the amount per kilowatt hour charge. So that's 13 cents a kilowatt hour and off peak. That's my cheapest. And the most expensive is 48 cents. So that's a big difference. So then we, we do try to remember what time of day it is or we do things at our house. So you can see here, this is the month of June to July, this last year. And this negative and that negative are actually because of our solar. So we were generating enough to offset our usage during those times. Off peak, though, you see we used 408, or 409 kilowatt hours and um, incurred that cost. And that's because that's when we were, had our cars plugged in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's enough on that bill, I think. Unless, is there a question about that bill? I wonder if I could just say one thing. This isn't going to always be such a good deal um, because uh, for both electric cars and for solar, um, the, the good deal is partly an incentive. And 
they need less incentive as time goes on. But this is a ridiculously good deal. If you look at those numbers there, we get credited 40 cents a kilowatt hour when the car is plugged in in the middle of the night. And then, um, I mean, I mean we, yeah, we get, no, I'm sorry, we get credited that 48 cents when the sun is out and hitting right. our panels any time in the, in the middle to late afternoon. And then we're only paying 13 cents. And when you look at our bill, you know, 80% of our usage is between 11 and 7 when we're paying 13 cents a kilowatt hour. So this kind of time of use plan is incredibly advantageous if you have solar and electric car. It, it just makes the cost of, of driving an electric car okay. way less than gas. Okay, so is it more economical? Um, it really depends on if you can adjust your schedule to doing things um, at different times of day. Some of you have thermostats um, and you can set those for running off peak hours. And again, your electric vehicle can be charged at night or if you have any other big users, you can put them on at night. Okay. And there are some tips on the same one. So, um, now the first one is basic conservation. Just any time you leave your room, turn off the light. You know, turn off your computer, turn off whatever you're not, if you're not watching your TV, why is it off? So, just basic conservation. Um, the next one, mid morning to midday, if you can, adjust your thermostat or some, um, some of those things that you can accommodate using before the peak time or wait until after the peak time. That would not be true in the Midwest right now. Freezing no. <laughs> <laughs> temperatures. Well, that was pretty cool, all right. Yeah. <laughs> um, late afternoon to evening. Um, this is a great one to remember. Load first, run later. It's not about leaving home. It's really about loading your dishwasher and your, and your dryer and your washer, and then just, you know, some of them have a delayed start. Or late at night, you press the start button and go to bed. Or Get up earlier. <laughs> okay. Um, no. So, are there questions on that? On the time of use? So there's essentially three plans. Yeah. No. What, what are we going to have to choose? Why you have um, to sometime in 2020. Stop. You have a little time yet. You can come over and I'll show you how we do it. We've been on it like what did you say? Five years. Yeah. yeah. Since we first got an electric car. Um, one thing about the time of use schedules that Jane was showing us, you might, if you're on time of use, you might be on a different schedule because those are all new schedules. So all of this stuff is kind they're of... They're constantly right changing now. it, yeah. Well, and not constantly, but the they, they updated. The big change that's coming up, um, it's reflected partly in there already. Right now, the EV plan starts at 2 o'clock, and that's going to change to 4 o'clock. Yeah, so we're going to talk about that later. Okay. okay. So now we're going to talk about electric vehicles. It's still a bit thunder, and it's also, there's a different plan if you have a battery storage, I think. Different time of use. So, um, electric vehicles, EV, um, you can work it out to pay the equivalent of a dollar per gallon gas charging an electric vehicle if you can get you know charge it at the cheap rate. So that's that's a really um, high incentive to be on an EV plan if you have an electric vehicle. Um, there are rebates available for purchasing um, electric vehicles. pg e has on the state of California, the federal tax credit. Um, for convenience, you might want to put in a uh, charging station, although um, there are more and more of them, as we know, happening around. And um, you also get the benefit of driving in the carpool lane with your little sticker on your car if you have a commute like that. Okay, next. So this is a time of rate, time of use, sorry, rate for the EV plants. So again, they have three different time zones. They have peak off, uh, partial peak and off peak. So the blue zone is the off peak. And it actually starts at 11 p.m. and it ends at 7 in the morning. So if I want to run my laundry late at night, I have to stay up till 11 o'clock, <laughs> which I do. So, um, and then at 7, we get the partial peak, and it goes until 2 p.m. So, that's not so bad, you know, it's a little bit more money. But the peak time is 2 till 9, and then they put a little, little bit, 2 hour partial peak to keep you up till 11 o'clock, just because they can. So, um, <clears throat> these rates, you know, they're, they're more nuanced. Than the, than the other time of use, which just have um, peak and off peak. 
So this this one, whoops, the right page here. Sorry. Um, this one is applicable to weekdays. Um, the weekends actually has a peak time on um, with the EV as well. But with any luck, with the solar, we're just offsetting a lot of that. So, so um, electric vehicles can be set so they only charge at night, which is very convenient. You don't have to think about it. Um, the summer rates, um, okay, so here we have EVA and EVB. We have two different plans. Now, they're both non-tiered, that is, they don't have a baseline. And the EVA has a single meter, that is, one meter for your house and your car. It's just all one system. The EVB has an extra meter. You get a meter put in just for your car. And there's a cost incurred with that. That can be somewhat expensive to have an extra meter put in. Um, and so then your residential is kept separate. And I'm not certain why you would want to do that, but... Um, you, would, you could keep your residential on a tiered rate, which could be a lot cheaper if you weren't using that much in your house. Right, if you want to do your baseline. Once the time of use rates go into effect, it will be less attractive Yeah, I think it will be less that. advantageous. And here you see the price again, 13 cents to, eight, to 48 cents, as I mentioned on the bill earlier. So the summer is more expensive than the winter, and the winter it only goes up to 34 cents, but in the summer it goes up to 48 cents. And um, I think there's one, one more slide here. So this is, again, another one of our bills. You notice it's the EV, Electric Vehicle A program. We have only one meter, so we have A. NEM2, that means net energy metering, the number two program, not solar. So here you see again, peak, part peak, off peak. Notice this is November. The sun's not producing as much. Um, solar energy for us. So uh, we didn't get a negative credit during our peak time, so our bill was higher. But again, our off-peak, um, because there's more nighttime hours, you know, we probably have the lights on more, and who knows, charging more, it was 636 um, kilowatt hours we used in that one month, and that's again charged, primarily charging the cars. So, so any questions on EV, yes. Not on EV, but did you say um, that the PG&E tool will allow you to take your current energy usage and run models on each of these plans? Well, I think so, but I wasn't able to do it. It, okay. it looks like that you can do that, but as Seth said to me, be careful you don't change your plan by mistake. But they do have a tool that says compare plans. Okay. And then it says, sorry, we're working on this. Yeah. I don't know if it's because of Monterey Bay Community Power or something. We, we, we need to find that out. We need yeah. to find out because yeah. that's how Because it else doesn't work. It's never worked. Yeah. Um, it hasn't worked in a long time, I should say. A couple okay. of years ago it worked for me. All right. All so right. It was a great, when it works, it's a great yeah. tool because you could just say, okay, if I had been on this plan, what would it have cost yeah. me last month? Right, right. That, that would be very useful. Okay. So, questions? Okay. Then that I'm done. And then we're going to have Wendy talk some more. So, how many people here have solar? Oh, God. Is there anybody awesome. thinking about getting solar? Yes. <laughs> pressure to get <laughs> solar? Thinking. <laughs> the thinking is not in the middle. Your pressure. <laughs> okay. Well, um,. When you get solar, you start, it, um, you become a little power plant, your own home, mm -hmm. and you are producing energy for your, for your house. And the cool thing about that is you can get your energy from the sun, but the uncool thing about it is, is when the sun goes down, you're, you're stuck buying power from the utility again. So it would be a very expensive investment if it only works part of the time. Mm -hmm. So what the powers that be have given us is net energy metering. <laughs> and um, and this is how it works. But this is different than if you have a battery. Right. right. This is. Yeah. Yes, it is. Do you have silver? No. So very briefly, number one, your, your solar panels make electricity. 
Number two, the electricity goes through your inverter. It converts from direct current to alternating current, which is what you use in your home. So number three, that energy then goes to feed your home. But the cool thing is, is number four, if your panels are producing more electricity than your home needs at that moment, your excess exports out to the grid and the meter records how much. If, like at night, your panels are not making as much as your house needs, automatically the grid will supply you with energy. That's mm -hmm. those gray arrows. And your meter records how much. So what net energy metering is, is that it's an accounting system by which the utility gives you credit mm -hmm. for the excess that you've exported. So you get kilowatt hours in the bank, so to speak. So, um, so during the day you can bank those kilowatt hours. At night you can use them. During the summer when the days are long, you can bank a lot of kilowatt hours. In the winter when the days are short, you, you can use that credit. In essence, what they've done is they've let solar customers use the grid as their storage battery. Mm. Um, okay, this is a, a kind of a visual example of how it works. This is a one day, October 9th, John Lennon's birthday <laughs> um, at our house. The, the, <laughs> the purple line, you can ignore, that's the temperature. Um, the, the graph starts over at midnight, and every bar stands for an hour throughout the day. Do you guys look at these ever on your PG? Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, you can see the blue bars are at night when our system was not producing anything, so we were importing power to run the refrigerator and stuff. During the day when the sun was out, we had those green bars. We were producing all kinds of extra and getting credit for it to be used again at night. And the reason we want so much extra credit is because we also have an electric car, and we plug it in, and then we go to bed, and at 11 o'clock at night it starts charging. So that's what's happening right there. Mm -hmm. And the next slide shows you the rest of the night. It's charging for another three and a half hours. Mm -hmm. So um, I feel like we don't pay anything to, <laughs> to drive around. <laughs> right. Except what we spent on the system. You had to buy the system. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Is that <laughs> Feels like we don't pay anything. <laughs> okay, what's next here? So net energy you probably all know this. Net energy metering customers are on a 12-month billing cycle. We get one bill a year, basically. Mm -hmm. Because it takes a whole year to figure out, you know, have you bought more or sent more? Mm -hmm. um, and that statement, that bill is called your true up statement. So the next slide shows last year at our house. Um, each bar, each bar is a month, so it starts in January and goes across. So um, every year is different because your life is things happen. Um, so you can see in this year. So if your system size just right, if the blue bars and the green bars are going to balance out. Mm -hmm. um, in this, so if the blue bars are bigger in the end, you're going to have a bill at the end of the year. If the green bars are bigger, you're going to have um, credit. And what happens then is your, um, your balance is reset to zero to start the new year. And you actually get a little bit of compensation for those kilowatt hours that you sent to the grid. And it's called net surplus compensation. Um, PG&E gave on average three cents for every kilowatt hour that we donated to the grid. Uh, Monterey Bay Community Power has doubled it. We now get six cents. It's not as much as we pay for kilowatt hour, but it's something. And there's reasons for all that. OK. Is it anything? It's still double. It's very good. Double is good. We're happy. Yeah, and I think it's like two and a half times as much. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's good. So that graph that you, those two graphs, they're on your PG&E bill? 
or how do you access those? We're going to show you how to do that up before we're done here. Today. They're online. I mean, PG and &E bill online. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, if you, you open an account and well, you have an account, then you can go and look yeah. every day. Okay. I was just, just trying. You would love yours. Because I have the, <laughs> any the Tara paperwork. <laughs> and Do you get those? What? Paper bills? No. We no. I'll look. I'll look at them afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> we only pay nine nine dollars and eighty six cents for the transmission. But I've got like. They'll do it later. Okay. Except for you. I'm going to talk about that nine eighty six cents right now. <laughs> <laughs> Just make sure you hit me in the head with something. <laughs> um. So we get a, a true up statement once a year, but we still get a monthly statement also that tells us kind of what our net usage was. So the amount we've exported minus the amount we've imported is actually the other way around. And that's our net use. Yes? Within a month, if you have a net use rather than a net credit, you still don't pay until the end of the year? Or? Right. Oh. You pay at the end of the year. I haven't had mine for a full year yet. So, um, so <laughs> Robert mentioned that even if you're you're all you have all the, lots of green bars and you're exporting all kinds of electricity and you're not actually buying any, there's you still have to pay stuff. <laughs> and um, so everybody, my understanding is everybody, solar and non-solar, everybody pays that charge that you mentioned. It's called a minimum delivery charge, and that got the price of using the grid. If you're, um, if you've been out, so there's been a couple different iterations of net energy metering. So some people have had solar for a while, they're on then one, and the only extra charge they pay is that $10 a month. Um, it was really expensive to put in solar a long time ago, so they made the incentives pretty good. Um, the, the new iteration is called NEM2. People on NEM2 pay some more charges that non-solar customers also pay. Um, there's one called the state-mandated non-bypassable charge that you've probably seen. You see that really fast three times? <laughs> I've seen that. And that covers a bunch of stuff. It covers the decommissioning of Diablo Canyon, nuclear power plant. It covers and helps pay for public programs like the CARE program, other stuff. And the, the Monterey Bay? Uh, customers are paying that as well? Yes. Modern day customers and PG&E customers are all paying these exact same charges. So, and, um, and there will be, the next iteration will be NEM3 at some point. So if you are going solar in the future, make sure your contractor knows which NEM program you're going to be on when you're trying to figure out the economics of it. And do it soon because it'll, it'll probably hit next year. Then three. What? Yeah, no, three will probably hit next year, which means the deal if you're a solar customer gets a little worse or not as not as favorable. So if you're thinking about it, you should do it sooner rather than later. Right. Okay. Num one is the best because right. you've had it longer. When M two, it's still pretty good, right? right. <laughs> and then. It'll be num three, and then it'll be num four, and you know it'll keep going. But how is and what what is it that gets worse? I don't understand. Um, so the, the finances, it doesn't pencil out as well. So when you mentioned there's some charges that num one customers don't pay at all, num two customers do, and then um, there's a big effect coming up, in the, and it it isn't even with num three coming into effect, but. Uh, when you sign up for solar, you get grandfathered in, not for rates, you're not guaranteed the same rate, but sort of the rate structure stays the same. And some, so if you sign up in, in the right time, your time of use plan that's available to you could be different. And if you're on solar and you have a time of use plan where the peak starts at 2 in the afternoon, that means you're going to have a whole lot of time when you're generating during peak, so it's really favorable. So if you, um, I think now if you sign up, your um, peak time will start at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. 
So you're going to miss a couple of hours of peak generation. But don't don't despair because your <laughs> your solar system probably is going to be cheaper to to purchase in the first place yeah. than it would have been ten years ago. Yeah. Or one year ago or two years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's just you know. Okay. But you made a comment that if you have an M1 system and then you put in you put in more that. And that's a good thing to know about. Yeah, if you have a NEM1 system, so you're, you're grandfathered in for 20 years on certain aspects of that rate structure, but let's say you want to make your system bigger. If you add more than 10% to that system, you're going to be put onto NEM2 and you're going to lose that advantage for the whole system. Oh, that didn't happen to us. I know. It's interesting. <laughs> yeah, but maybe that's a change since you put your last system in, but that's how it is now. Cindy? My bill doesn't say whether it. NEM1 or NEM2. Does that mean it's like... You know, if it just says NEM, NEM, it means you're NEM1. NEM1? Yeah. yeah. And we added to our system too, but how many years ago was it? Five something? It's probably NEM1 still. Still yeah. NEM1. Okay. So... Another, you know, another little zinger just to try to figure out what's going on on your bill. Um, you know, California passed, I think, about two years ago, a program of putting a, a tax on carbon, basically. People, big industries that generate carbon have to pay money to the state, and it's generating a huge amount of money that's being used for a lot of different things. Um, most, a lot of them are focused on trying to reduce um, greenhouse gases in other ways also. But they also credit everybody back on their electric bill. And the idea was our electric bills went up because PG&E had to pay a tax on, and the gener people who were generating energy with fossil fuels had to pay a tax. And they didn't want to raise our costs. So they, they raised our rates, but then gave some of it back. But it still sends a message to us, because we're going to get the money back no matter what, but we're, um, we're only going to have to pay the increased rates if we use more power. So um, it's an incentive for people to use less electricity. So if you look on your bill, it is twice a month in April and October. Um, twice a year. Twice a year, thank you. Um, right now it's set at $39.42, so you're getting about $80 a year um, without having to do anything. And this is, this is on the uh, first page of the summary at the top where it will show that amount. If you go back and look at your bill from October, you'll see that it's there. Um, reducing the bill. Is that, can I stop you for a second? Mm -hmm. So, um, Terry yes. has had a concern about why has her bill gone up so much recently? I need to look at your bill for sure. Um, if your bill went up right when you went on Monterey Bay Community Power in July, uh, which you, everybody's did. With and the yeah, the, the reason that the bills went up right then is because there are different rates in the uh, winter and the summer. And so coincidentally, ah. right when everybody got switched over, the rates went up. And that's why a lot of people, because you know what I was showing you, you can't really figure out that you're paying the same as PG&E. And so people saw they got a bigger bill and thought, oh, you know, I'm, I'm going to go back to PG&E. I'm paying more. But it was not um, a case of Monterey Bay community power raising your rates. It, it, just time of year along. Okay. Right. You could check um, your bill a year ago and see what the same month and see kind of how it compares. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and especially if you check the um, the kilowatt hour usage and make sure that wasn't a lot different than a year ago. Although rates have changed since a year ago, and Monterey Bay community power, you know, PG&E regularly is applying for rate increases. And Monterey Bay Community Power will mimic those, you know, all along the way. pg and &E raises their rates, at least for now. Monterey Bay will follow that so they don't have to do their own rate setting. And so they remain competitive. So this is the, um, Wendy was showing you some graphs that showed time of day and time of year, how your energy was used. This is on the My pg and &E website. And if you go on there, you need a copy of your bill to enter your account number. If you have more than one account, um, you'll have access to all your accounts, and you can see your bill. There's a lot of tools on there. If you do want to change your rate plan, you can do it right on the web page. This is what it looks like when you go on, and you enter a username and a password to get into the 
web page. And then you can see up here, um, you can look at your current bill. You can, this is a really good place to go, solar and energy details. That's where you get those graphs showing what your usage was. Um, you can compare your bills, see why one bill is different from another bill. And this is the compare rate plan button that isn't working for us um, at this point anyway. Um, and then over here is your history. So you can click on that and you get a drop down menu and you can go look like for a previous year right, and see how that is. And if you go into um, here, and I'll try to do this real quick for you online, I won't take a lot of time if I can't just get it to come up, but you can actually um, download a spreadsheet. This is what, if, you, if you're going to get a solar system, this is what the solar contractor should do, is he should get your permission to get access to your account online. You can just push a button, download a spreadsheet, it'll show your energy uses by 15-minute intervals for, I think, for years, actually. And they can take that information and use it to size your solar system. And, and even possibly to design the way it's set up. And you know, if you're talking about batteries, they can give you some good feedback on batteries. So I will um, just take a second here and see if I can. So, more, more questions to rehab. I was kind of, Go ahead. I was kind of curious on your bill you showed last year, or last period it was seven kilowatt hours and for your current bill is much higher than last year's. Can we have two electric cars? <laughs> <laughs> but we have we never buy gas. I'm just curious. So yeah, that, that, no, that would be why. One, yeah, one we always period. our bill used to always be like seventy, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. But we have um, mm -hmm. definitely plugging them in and driving around a lot. Mm -hmm. So that's the main reason that, that ours is more. Yeah. So we, we wanted to, to know if people want to split into small groups or um, to look at bills, you know, like all the people who have a tiered bill, if you want to talk about it kind of page by page, all the people who are on, you know, time of use or whatever. We could do that or we could, if only, um, if only a few people have actual questions about this, um, we could sort of do that individually. I, I have a question that maybe we could throw out to everybody, and that is, um, for those of you that do have solar but not electric vehicles, um, why would I? When would my uh, uh, the price of solar get uh, spread out so that it would be worth my while? Right. Maybe two that's years, really five years. What's down the road? payback? What's the payback? Yeah. So, yeah. so that's really? when you get a quote. It I mean, really depends. Yeah. Oh, okay. Getting a quote is worthwhile, but it really depends on how much electricity you use. If you have a sixty dollars a month electricity bill, it's not going to be worth it. The cost per kilowatt hour for a little system is way more than a moderate sized system or a, or a large system. Okay, so getting a quote would be yeah. a way to go. Because they'll look at all your bills and they'll say, okay, if you have this much solar, we catch your bill down this much, and at some point, probably somewhere around three to five year payback kind of thing is pretty normal. For big okay. systems it may be eight years. But I mean, you know. The bigger just, system would be less actually. Would it? Yeah. <laughs> the bigger the system, the quicker the payback. It depends on your usage. Yeah. Right, but you wouldn't put a bigger system in if you didn't have a big usage. Yeah. But you also need to anticipate, try to think, oh yeah, I think maybe I'm gonna buy an electric right. car. Right. Or mm -hmm. if you're changing out your appliances, um, and you're gonna go all electric. Okay. Something like that, yeah. Okay, so that's, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, really getting an electric car is a, um, is a big reason. It, it's kind of a no-brainer once you do that. And if you look at the numbers, Jane mentioned some of the rebates. There's the $7,500 federal tax rebate on everything except for the Tesla where it started to go down. How long does it last? I mean, when did they go away? Until the manufacturer sells uh, 200,000 cars. Right. Each manufacturer is different. And Chevy, the Bolt is going to get up to that in, at the end of June. So if you're interested in the Bolt, you want to buy it before the end of June. But on top of that, there's a state rebate of $2,500. Um, Monterey Bay Airport has had a $1,500 rebate that they fund every year and then it goes away. But I think you know most people have been able to get it if it's if it's if the bucket's empty when you apply, then when they refill it, you get it later. And that's the, that's a rebate for what? For electric, uh, electric vehicles. vehicles. Oh, these are all the vehicles. Purchase vehicles. Right. Yeah. Right. All PG&E um, has an $800 uh, rebate if you buy an electric car. 
and Monterey Bay Community Power is working on a rebate program. We're actually going to be negotiating with all the dealers in the area to get a lower price that's available to people who go in through Monterey Bay Community Power and get the rebate and then also get a good price on the car. So if you put all those things <coughs> together and then figure out what it costs to get your car tuned up and get the oil changed and all the, the, all the expenses of maintaining an internal combustion engine car, mm. And you know all of these costs <laughs> together actually um, can be cheaper for you to to drive an electric car than a gasoline car. And the new cars, like Leslie has, the Chevrolet Bolt has a range of 230 miles on it. And so you don't think about charging isn't a thing anymore. You get home at night, you plug it in, you get up in the morning, it's charged. And unless you're driving, you know, to Los Angeles, in which case you can stop and fast charge it. Um, so it's, it's really changing fast, and there'll be cars in the next few years that will go 500 miles on a charge. And, um, but it's really, the, the level now, once it gets over here, they're really practical. And, um, and once you drive one, you, you won't want to go back. They're way more fun to drive than gas cars. We have a pickup coming there's, there's also a, a $7,000 well, federal tax credit. $7,500 federal tax credit. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. One thing about the tax credit. That's, that's the one that you're talking about being limited by the number of cars sold. That's yes. Right. So, that's for example, you buy a Tesla, you only get $3,750 now. Instead of oh, they found $3,000. Right. Also, they did yeah. Tesla lower their, their prices right. to that. Well, that's price. the other thing about solar to keep in mind is, you know, whenever you hear about certain programs going away, a lot of times the manufacturers will lower their prices to try to make it almost the same as before. Yeah, yeah. Right. And yeah, so <coughs> tended to get cheaper. If you're thinking about an electric car, one thing to be aware of is the $7,500 tax credit is something you cannot carry it forward. You have to take it in the year. So you need to make sure that you structure your taxes so you have $7,500 in income tax liability that year, otherwise you won't, you won't get all of it. And I think a lot of people get burnt on that. You know, the advertising all, you know, it says this is the price, and they're already figuring in the $7,500, but if you don't get the $7,500, it's... Yeah. So change your W-4 to have eight kids or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, is it okay to ask a question about this? Is exactly this topic, but sure. is this a right. What is that? What is that battery backup? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, battery yeah. backup is so that if the electricity goes off, you can still use your electricity because you're you, you're running off your battery as opposed to um, having it come through the lines. Okay. How much are you able to store in yours? It's full. <laughs> 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 but you don't know because it's, it's how many... You haven't had to use it. I haven't had to... We haven't had to use it and it's how... What kind of... I don't know what the weather is like and how much you use it. And, and ours goes to four different places in our house. So we would have had to get two batteries if we wanted to run the entire house. So what, what Barbara's talking about is, is they a lot of times when they put battery backup in, they do a little rewiring at your box so that if you go on battery backup, there may be some circuits that you don't really need, you know, because they would deplete your battery quicker. So you're saying, I want my ice box to be on, and I want the lights to be on, and ice I want... Ice box. Ice box. Ice box. <laughs> 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 That's a electric car. <laughs> 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 But you know, the, the future is going to be that you're going to have a battery system that's going to look at your peak and it's going to draw from the battery during peak and recharging and off peak. Mm -hmm. That's where the yeah. future is going. So it's too early that's to get a battery system if you're going to get so a smart battery. I have a battery that and I'm already doing that where it's set, to, it'll charge during the day and then I'm not drawing from the grid during the peak. Oh, mm -hmm. It's discharging from the battery, so I'm not paying those hard, wow. hard rolls. Right. Good. Is it um, not enough to charge your car though? No, it wouldn't be. But it's enough to run your lights and watch TV and, solar, you know, so. do some of the things, maybe run, put your laundry yeah, machine yeah. on. Yeah. And I mean, for the peak shaving, <laughs> if you're paying 48 cents during peak, and you can use your battery during that time and charge it right. at night when right. you're only paying, right. what, 18 or 22 cents. Or 13 okay. Well, yeah. but there is a catch. If you take the solar, uh, the, the credit, the tax credit on the battery, you can't charge it from the grid. It can only charge from the solar panels. Oh. 
Really? Yeah. Well, let's see and not get too technical. Yeah. Well, how long is it going to get to go change your wiring and make it? Let's <laughs> <laughs> switch. I don't see this. It's all software. Yeah. Listen. I have a question about battery backup, too. So for those of us who have electric vehicles, let's say if we're running solar and we don't have battery, it's my understanding that when the grid goes down, or even though we have solar, yeah. we don't have power, which means we can't charge our electric vehicles. Yes. So it's important for us to have battery backup. Um, the question is, how much battery backup do we need in order to charge the EV and also maintain minimal usage in the house during a power out? And I know that's a hard question to answer, yeah. but what would the projection be? It's, it's, it's a cost-benefit analysis. I mean, having a, um, a battery so the way a lot of the inverters work is when the grid goes down, they automatically shut down. And that's why you can't access your solar panels, because the inverters shut down. But if you have a battery and you have it configured correctly, the battery is giving power to the solar panel so they can still run. So you wouldn't be able to just charge from your battery, but you'd also be able to charge from the solar panels during the day. Right. But that's a te the sizing would be a technical question, and battery costs are coming down as quickly as solar panels were a few years ago. So um, it's it's getting more and more affordable, and you really just have to look at the specifics. Gonna you know if you're getting a solar system, ask them what it would cost to include a battery, and then take a look at the numbers and and see if it's worthwhile. I saw an answer that somebody had, you know, maybe was because they had a large place but to put in the battery. It was, I mean, it shocked me how much it was. Fifteen thousand dollars for the battery? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It depends probably on the size of the battery. It was probably in gym, so you know, they got yeah. a lot of space. But I, I, when I saw that, I was like, wow. And that's probably for a standalone. You know, if you're putting a solar system in. Yeah. It's the economy of scale. If they're going to be there working anyway, it would be less than that for the battery was, part of it. Ours was five, and we got thirty percent off of our tax. Was thirty percent off of our taxes, wasn't it? What, yeah, what, what are the thirty yeah. percent federal energy bill? Yeah, yeah. But you only get that if you're doing it in conjunction with the solar system. So are system. we going to do this? Um, we could do this. I mean, I just want to, to, I just, to see how this works. I just wanted to click around a couple of you places. Yeah. yeah. That's the, the bad thing about the PG&E website. If you're not like on it in five minutes, you time out and you have to just see. See what Wendy said about, I, I thought years ago when we had the thing at the Grange explaining solar, I thought what they said is none of it goes to your house. I mean, you're producing it for the grid and then you're getting it back. Mm -hmm. Has that changed or did I just can't get that information? I well, I heard it's from a solar nice. provider today that when you're charging PV, PV it's automatically feeding your house. It's not going into the grid. It takes okay. care of the energy usage first. So, mm -hmm. unless that was that's correct. something he was mm -hmm. saying, that's correct. Me they, they used to do it differently. And that's important so because I have that too. one of the differences Everybody between NEM1 and NEM2 is um, on NEM1, you're paying for the um, distribution charges for the power that you're using. Let's see, how does this work? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> hmm. Let's see, on that two. Maybe you should just not do that right now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, get the graph out of here. You can time out of the end. So, on, on the so stuff, if you want an extra job, come up with uh, one of the acronyms. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I was reading through these. Like, <laughs> I've never seen so many three-letter words. <laughs> when you look at these the up here, you can see this in terms of kilowatt hours, or you can see it in terms of dollars. And it's oh, that's not, that's, it, that's where it, you get the non-function sign. Yeah, but that's because it will only do that for certain for bill views. Yeah. Yeah. So this is um, a monthly bill. This is a this was a we used a lot more. This than is a day it. view. And once again, you can see the electric car charging dwarfs the actual household use in between. Mm -hmm. Let's see if this will do energy costs. No, out. they won't do it. Okay, so then we have to go to year view. Let's see if that'll do it. There we go. So that's that's showing the energy costs, and this is um, every bar represents one month. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So um, should we break into groups and look at bills individually, or we want to look at your bill for sure? How about yours? No, I, I think I've got my question. I know that some, of it, some people brought. Did you, what about you, Pat? I don't know, but I think I got the basics. Do you things. think you yeah. have an idea? Does anyone have specific questions on their bill? No. What a great class! You guys just got it all. <laughs> Have one problem, child. Yeah. 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 You have to say after, okay? Thank you. Okay. So, uh, one, one little thing, yeah, thank you for coming, but I also want to say um, we will be having, uh, we're going to try to plan a solar tour. So, if you'd like to be part of the solar tour or go on the solar tour, let, let one of us know and we'll keep you in mind. We don't have a uh, date yet, but it'd be kind of fun thing to do. And um, just so you know, the um, oatmeal cookies were baked in off. <laughs> <laughs> So our, our, our goal that we're working toward in our one little step at a time is to get our whole community and the community of San Juan onto renewable energies and we've been making some some strides. So yeah. there's a lot of there's a lot of residential solar systems when you look at the list. Do you have a a list or just a couple of names that you would recommend for yes, solar? Like for that's, solar a really good, that's a really good question. You I want to speak to that list? Yeah, I do. I, we, I have been personally interviewing different um, residential solar companies, and I have the names of three that I, I can comfortably recommend to you. Can you email them to me? I would be happy to do that. Say about them. Them. Yes, oh, one of them is um, a Bright Future Solar out of Salinas. I just met with them today, actually, and they Seth will appreciate this, do a lot of work with grid alternatives and they do a lot of low income work. So they are kind of near and dear to my heart. Um, the, the other is a company called Sandbar Solar. Sandbar? Sandbar, Sandbar. Solar. Bar. Mm -hmm. Must be from the beach. And the last one is called Solar One, O-N-E. Mm. It might be One Solar. I, I always, but it's, <laughs> or, or, yeah, or One Solar. Okay, so this is Salinas. Yes, and the other two are Santa Cruz, and then I uh, want to do some more um, interviewing with uh, Watsonville and Hollister. So we have a nice, you know, So I'll just wait for you to do all the yeah. work. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. what we're doing. We're, we actually really want to do the work to help people do it. Cool. It's complicated, and it helps. I think sometimes, I mean, I know for me, it's, it's easy to be sort of lethargic about some of this stuff. It's like we all have so many things to do. So if, if the Climate Action Team of APOC can help the community figure out this stuff, we're happy to do that. So. In, in terms of other solar contractors, Altera is a big company that has a, a solid reputation. They tend to be um, significantly more expensive, I think, just because they're bigger, more overhead. Mm -hmm. And uh, one Aromas resident has a sort of negative experience with them, so I, I don't know if I would call them myself. So stay away is what you're saying from uh, that. Not so necessarily. Yeah. You yeah. need to make, make your own decision. Right, right. right. Well, right. it's always they good. They probably have a lot of happy customers. Well, there's no doubt they have a lot of happy customers, but, um, hmm. but this was a kind of upsetting circumstance, I thought. Um, hey, Terry, would you send me an email? Anybody else have Just anything? I have to just say this was awesome. Yes. 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 Thank you. Yes, thank you. I'm so are there, we can have the oh, Are there some ideas that you'd like to uh, know more about? Or another workshop uh, around climate change or interviews or anything? We'd love to hear it. Seth, I have one last comment. Um, I, I assume you might have got the email also, but but the bankruptcy judge today uh, yes. for PG&E declared that all the Monterey Bay Community Power and all the other CCAs, the money is passed through, so we don't have to be a secure or unsecured creditor. The money just passes through. Wow. So there's no danger of us <laughs> paying our bills and it not going to Monterey Bay Community Power and then you know they're getting financial trouble. Oh, thank you for good. Yes, I get that. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't. And there's also no danger of pg e not doing their job of continuing to deliver power. Deliver power. That could happen in the future, but at this point, there's no danger of that happening. In the future. Well, you know, they're well. The grid's still up here. Yeah. 
Right. In, in fact, we were talking a little bit about pg has had a 180 reversal as to their, let's say, a love-hate relationship with CCAs. And so now they like us because we think they're, 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 they're having so many other battles to fight. You know, they're battling the PUC, they're battling the bankruptcy judge. Now they're battling FERC, which is a federal energy regulatory commission. Yeah, uh, a lot of acronyms, you know, as you said. And so they're fighting all these battles, and they don't want to fight one more, you know. Right? Yeah. They're battling a federal judge that wants to yeah. convict them of a felony. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I also want to thank Wes for the filming. Yes, yeah. thank you, Wes. Sure. I mean, all your neighbors can find out what, you, what you're talking about. <laughs> We're also going to be screening a movie at Ansar on the 28th of February. Mm -hmm. The, called Cowspiracy, it looks at the issue of uh, the impact of Cows. animal agriculture on climate change. Mm -hmm. At what time? It's a good thing to go to. Mm -hmm. 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, flyers and stuff to the library. I was really impressed about this film because um, a couple, I didn't get to, I wasn't there the night, it was, it was previewed just to check it out. And a couple of the people who were meeting people who saw the film afterwards, they were both just saying, no one's talking about this, and we got to do something. It's like, you know, and a lot of it has to do with the, the um, increase in wealth in the third world and just the number of people who are starting to eat lots of animal products. And it's kind of an overwhelming uh, way. All right, everybody should take a cookie. Thank you very much for coming.